Hello, everyone, and welcome to another session of Business Intelligence Tips with Dashboard Gear. Today, we're uh, going to be talking about a fun topic, temp tables and SQL Server reporting services. Now, before I get going, I have to apologize for something. Last week, someone did a comment during it, and I've been very poor about looking at the comments till afterwards. So I'm going to try and do my best that if any of you are watching, you do have comments, I'm going to peek over there occasionally and, and look at the comments that come in. So I apologize for not getting back to you right away uh, last week. I just totally missed that. It's up in the uh, small little corner of the screen in my case, so I just forgot to look. So I'll try and do that. Now, today's topic is with temp tables uh, is something that I get asked about quite a bit. And it's, I, it's something that when I get stuck with how to build a report, usually you can accomplish it with temp tables. Now, a database purist will be all over me about, you know, you shouldn't be using these and all of that. But whenever I get stuck, this there is a way out. So um, what I'm going to do is um, close down this one overlay and share my screen. So um, sometimes you get a request for a report that's kind of an odd shaped report, maybe that the rows you want to come in a very specific order and they don't really match the data or there's a whole bunch of unique uh, indicators or statistics and things that really just don't come in as a single data set. So it's not like you can just write a simple query that says, select all these statistics and give me the numbers. So in a case like that, what I like to do is just think through how I would want to lay out my data if I could do something like that. And what I do is I create a temp table to match that structure. So uh, for instance, here in this uh, workforce analytics section that I'm uh, showing you here, it's got head count and some numbers and average head count and FTE count, a bunch of miscellaneous statistics. I can't just write a simple query to give me those uh, totals. Those are all separate items. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to jump over and um, I'm going to try and create a, a new report here. So I'll do new report. We're going to open up uh, the report builder tool like we've been using. And as you as you recall in past sessions, you don't need to use report builder to build reports, but I find that it's the easiest one to get started with. So we're going to do a, a table report and we're going to base that on creating a data set. Now, when you want to create a temp table, what we're going to do is I'll just do this off our financial data for now. It doesn't really matter. Is we're, we can't use the out of the box little wizard here. So we need to do it as SQL. So this topic today is going to be um, more or less related to um, those that uh, are familiar with SQL um, and, and how that um, functions. So you have to be able to write a SQL statement. Now, what a temp table is, is a, a table like a regular table, but it's just for the session and connection that you're on. So it's there, you can use it, and then when you close your connection, it disappears. So um, how you create and use a temp table with SQL reporting services is in my query, instead of just typing like a select, you know, whatever, select star or whatever your select query is, the first thing you do is you create your temp table. And so the syntax to do that is create table, and then you use the pound sign, and that's what tells SQL Server that this is a temp table. If you don't do that, then it's going to try and create a physical table. Uh, and you know you could run into problems if you don't have permissions and all of that. So I'm just going to say create a table, pound, and I'll just call it my result. So I'll call my table my result uh, with a hashtag. And then it's a parenthesis. And then you just start listing all the fields that you want in there. So maybe I want something like line number. I want a number because I'm going to order it by the line number, and that's going to be a type of integer. And so what you need to do is you need to say each field, the data type it is, and then whether or not you want to allow nulls or not nulls. So I'll just say line number, not null. Line description will be a character field. And I can say, hello, I'll say 200 characters, a long one. And I'll say not null. I had to do comma. And then I'll say some kind of, amount and that will be a data type i'm going to say is a, a decimal of 20 and i'll say two decimals 
you can do whatever there. So I'll just do that. So my table right now, if this was like querying a regular table, add three, three columns to it. It would have a line number, a line description, and an amount. Once you have that defined, what you do is you just start doing each query to populate that table with the values. So as I would put in there each statistic. So being it's World Series time, I'll do some baseball statistics here. I'll just say insert into, yeah, type it right, my result. I'm going to select for line number one, uh, ERA leader. Those of you that are baseball fans would know what that is. And I'll say is, you know, 2.1. And then I'm going to do another one, insert into my result. Select, find two, all this uh, uh, batting average. Now I could go on and on. But some of you might be asking, why would I do this versus, um, I'll say 328, uh, versus just doing like a union or something else. And the reason for that is, is it gives you more flexibility in that each line can be its own query, can be going after different things. Um, the, the reason I end up going to this rather than saying like select with a union and a, a union and doing that is I can go back after the fact and do a total on this or do updates or calculations on that table. So if you have to do things that are multiple passes, like here's all my amounts and I want to put on a line the total amount for the whole table, you can't do that in a single select unless you do like a nested subquery or something like that. But it, what this allows me to do is on the very end, I could do an update and say update the total field with the totals. Uh, or whatever. It's just a regular table. Then to use that in my report, I just say select star from my result at the end. So it's as simple as that. First thing I do is I define my table, then I populated my table, and then I just select from it at the end. So if I go ahead and I do next here, here's my fields. It found my fields. So I could drop all my fields in um, to my value section. And I don't want to total up my line number. Actually, I don't want to total up any of these. I just want to display them. We'll do next, next, finish. And we'll pop our report up uh, over here. And so if I go ahead and I run this report, it'll be kind of a basic ugly report at this point. But if I go ahead and I run it, There it came across, my ERA leader, my batting average, and so forth. It uses that data just like that. So a temp table allows you to define a temporary structure that you then can populate with many different queries. You can iterate and do totals on it. You treat it just like any other table, but you have total control to fill that in uh, in the result of your session. Now, um, what a lot of people would say that are, uh, table or programming purists would say at the end of this, you probably should do a drop on it. It will happen automatically, so I don't do a drop table on that. So I just leave it as as that. But that will run there. Um, so that's how you would use a temp table in this. And again, just to review, when you would want to do this is if you had a data set where you had a bunch of data that really wasn't a single simple query that you needed to do and it was maybe multiple passes of calculations or you wanted to do a percent uh, of the total calc or something like that, you can populate that each line, do your calculations and then select from it at the end. So it's a way that gives you a little more programmatic flexibility over the results of that. So that's what a temp table is in SQL reporting services. It really allows you to get unstuck from a lot of difficult SQL tasks and uh, gives you total flexibility into that. So uh, as I get through it, if you do have any suggestions or anything like that go, going forward, remember to comment at suggestions uh, to info at dashboardgear.com and we'll be happy to um, do those in future sessions. And again, thank you for watching today.